Let's get things my hair. Might be time for a, a cut. I'll get a haircut today. Did you, did you, uh... No, I, well, I figured it out if I, if I skip two haircuts, then it, it saves us lots of money. I'm so good at budgeting. Isn't, isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? <laughs> so this is, welcome back to part two uh, of wine making. I went shopping yesterday. You did, and you got came home very yeah. excited. Well, I was very fortunate. So I was I drove to uh, a town far away from here that had a um, a brewer supply. I happened to call my sister, and and we were talking. I said what I was getting. She said, "Oh, I have almost everything you need. Come over and get it." So I didn't have to buy hardly anything, but I did buy a few things. So I'll, I'll show you what I bought. So we're gonna do our initial fermentation today of our elder elderberries. We're not going to be using these. We're not going to be using these today, but we will be using them soon. These are called carboys. Why? This is a new term. I don't know. This is a new term. You know why growlers? But are they spelled carboys? I think it is. I think it's C A R B O Y. Huh. You know the growlers that they sell down to breweries? Those big, the big beer bottles you can see. Yeah. You know why they call those growlers? Have I told you? Maybe because if you drink too many, you go. I don't think Obviously, so. I don't know. Obviously, I don't know. I, what I read was when they brought them over from England or for Europe, they used to load them in the, in the holes of the ships. Was, uh. There's a heavy. And as the ship would, would yaw and pitch, that glass would kind of roll. It would kind of grind together and make it what sound like a growling sound that came from the hull of the ship. Uh. I think that's true. I think that's true. But these are called carboys. They're five gallons and they're glass. And you'll see this little thing on the top. This is a It's an airlock. Uh, I don't know exactly what it's called. Maybe called an airlock, but it, essentially what it is, it's a pee trap. Cool. It's the same same yeah. way you keep you know odor and smell out of like sewer pipes and such. But this will be for the secondary fermentation. So this is not something. And that's to keep air from getting in. I'm guessing. That's right. Okay. The, the the. But allow bubbles out if you need. The gases that the yeast will produce, they need to come out, or they'll pop the top off. Okay. Well, it, it needs to escape, but we don't want fresh. You know, like it was it the Franzia ad. Air is not fair to wine. Remember that? No. The box wine? No. Yeah. Sorry. So these are carboys. Oh, this is just, it's so exciting. It's so <laughs> exciting. I bought a whole case of, um, so the, the, the carboys were Corinne's. I bought a whole case of these. These I like this shape. This, these are claret bottles. Oh, and what's the story behind that? I don't know. I don't know. It's so just, if you know what... Carboy, growler, claret, what, what, why those terms are in use? I would yeah. like to know. It's, it's just, I, I'm not a, I'm not an alcohol aficionado, I don't, I don't know, but I thought that they were cool looking. They're beautiful. So we got, what, 12 of those? How okay. many's in there? Those are 750 milliliter, that's, that's the metric system. Milliliter. So we have those, oh, it, check this out, this is really cool. Oh. Again. Thing. This is a corker. Okay. This is how you put the cork in the in the bottles, and I bought a bag of corks uh -huh. right there, and we actually tried that out. This you want to try it out? Oh, let's let's do it later. Oh, let's later. It's fine. Let's try. Okay. Let's try. Let's okay. try it. Out. Remember, our friends are in there. All right, go ahead. Cork. <laughs> we're gonna, I already did one. I couldn't. We're gonna reuse the cork there. Okay. So you drop the cork in there. Uh huh. And then, is it supposed to go down like this? Yeah. Okay. And how far do you push I'll, it down? Until it stops, I think. Oh, you need a little... I, now, for me, this is too high for my me to use my arms. Why don't you put it on the ground? That's what I was going to do. <clears throat> and we, <clears throat> you said that I should wait to vacuum, but I, I knew I should vacuum <laughs> first, Cody. So, isn't that neat? That's pretty cool. And... Do you just use a corkscrew opener to get it out? Just yeah, I just a corkscrew opener and that's it. So that's the that's the corker. The corker. Test it out here. See how it comes out. Came out great. Pretty nice. Yeah. So are these actually made of cork or these these feel synthetic? I don't think so. I don't think they have the cork ones. Okay. There. Yeah. We could reuse those bottles over and over again. That's right. Okay. Okay, so the next thing that I got, and I, this is something I had to buy, is a, it's a siphon. So, and this 
tubing, food grade tubing that goes on there. So when we go through a process of called racking the wine, when we'll put it in the carboys, the sediment, sediment will settle down. Okay. And then we'll, and what this does is it allows you to, to create a vacuum, a siphon, mm -hmm. but it doesn't pull off the bottom, it pulls up a little higher so the sediment doesn't get in here. So you, you, you lift this up, yeah. it goes in the carboy, okay. and then at, you punch it down, it starts that siphon, and then you, you rack the wine down into the second carboy. Now if I'm out of gas, could I use this to get gas out of your car? No, not, I don't think so. <laughs> I, have one, I have one of those in the shop, it's different. And then um, I guess the last thing apart, you know, that's really interesting is this is called a, a hydrometer right there. And I never understood this, but how this works, but this is how you adjust the alcohol content in whatever it is that you're fermenting. If you're doing wine or beer, or if you're doing uh, like brandy or spirits or whatever, thing like that. And you add the sugar, so you have the mash. Let's say we're gonna make a pear brandy. So we run it through the apple press and we get the juice, we put the juice in there, and then this will float in there and it'll basically tell us what the alcohol content will be if we don't add any sugar. And the more alcohol, the more sugar you add, the more alcohol you get, so you can kind of adjust what you're gonna be making, whether it be a cider or, or a, a brandy like that. But this is, this is something that this was totally new to me. Interesting, and where, how does it measure it? I don't know. It's, it's very, it's, it's, that's science. Uh, I like science. I know, but really, like, how does it do that? I don't know. Well, I'm going to research that. Okay. That's really interesting to me. Yeah, isn't that neat? It's got, yeah. it's got like a red sealing wax holding in some sort of a ballast. Anyway, we'll, we'll learn more about that here pretty soon. And then finally, this is also something, so this is the tube. So you pour your liquid in there and then you could drop this in there. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you could do I don't know that you need to. I guess you could probably just drop this in the bucket. We'll see. Uh, well, if and, it's in the carboy, it'd be hard to get out. Yeah. And the last thing is the special acid sanitizer. I guess cleanliness is really important with all this stuff. Oh, okay, because so, you want to make sure you get the right fungus and not the wrong fungus? Yeah, I don't know that it's that important for our initial fermentation. And then, of course, I borrowed these from, from Corinne, the, these food-grade 22-quart Buckets. This is where we'll do our initial fermentation. This is what we're going to use today. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Are Let's you ready? Get... Yeah. Teach me. It's very nice sitting here with you doing this. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. So we took the we took the berries out of the freezer. They were in the, probably 24 hours or so, and on the cookie sheets, and it's pretty it's pretty simple to get them off. It's, uh, you just kind of squeeze them and they fall right off. And we're trying to get all of the little sticks out of it. I've heard a couple different people had different ideas on this. One guy said that, I talked to, said that a few stems doesn't hurt anything. It adds a tannin and a good flavor to the wine. Other people say you should get them all out. So we're, we're pretty much getting them all out. Yeah. Yeah. Sitting here doing this is, I mean, it would have been, you know, 100 years ago, 150 years ago. Pretty much the entire effort of the family, resource-wise, would have been dedicated to producing food. Right. I mean, uh, yeah, it just an enormous amount of time. I mean, what to go? What does it take to go buy a bottle of, you know, a bottle of wine compared to going and picking and going through all of this? It's, it's a. Uh, it's wonderful to uh, it's wonderful to learn how to preserve and to make all this different food and to attempt self-sufficiency in some ways but not to have to do it if you don't want to. I agree. I agree, but I would hate to be caught in a situation where we, you no longer have the choice. Right. Um, to be caught flat-footed and not have That's why I like doing this type of thing is is uh, at least you get kind of a basic understanding. You know, you, you're not starting from zero if times get hard. Or... Well, and sometimes you read about jobs get lost and money's not coming in and you need to eat what you've got in your larder and it's good to know how to do things. Man, do I enjoy being married to that woman. You know, that was best thing that happened 
best thing that ever happened to me really is uh, to, to be married to someone who is an optimist and always upbeat and always looking at the bright side of things is, um, well, sometimes I think it's just more than I deserve, but uh, I am grateful, but very grateful. So, Mother Earth News Fair coming up on, uh, lost my train of thought there, coming up uh, this weekend. We'll be in Pennsylvania, so we invite you to come out. We're going to have a little get-together. I'll put that information in the subject heading, so grab your families. Come on out and see us. It'll be a really great time. We're really looking forward to it. Seven Springs, Pennsylvania, I guess it is. Um, very many, much, much thanks. Many thanks to our, uh, our um, house sitter that'll be watching over things while we're gone and stirring the wine it's got to be stirred every day so that's going to be very helpful i was a little bit worried about it uh because heart racer you know lacking opposing thumbs she's really not very good at that type of thing what else what else is there i guess that's about it so this is going to ferment for seven days and then uh and then we'll uh we'll put it in the carboy so it'll be uh, quite a process so thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video